I remember sitting on a train in 2013 when I was working on the book. I was going from Newark, New Jersey to Washington, D.C., and it was a time when I was fully immersed in the data and in the writing and in the analysis. I was actually spending more time with the information and data or my people learning about methamphetamine and methamphetamine manufacturing and the methamphetamine lifestyle than I was with anything else. I mean, I was working, you know, 12, 15, 18 hours a day for six to seven days a week. Every once in a while, I'd be able to, you know, go somewhere and get a break so that I could continue to focus at the intense level that I was focusing on. And, you know, all of that had to be done so that I could understand my data in a way that I would be able to communicate it to someone who wasn't present at the interviews. I wanted them to feel like they were sitting at the table with me and really understand what I came to understand, not only through the interview process, but through the subsequent analysis and, you know, um, writing up of the book. And so I remember sitting on a train and I was sitting next to this very beautiful socialite looking girl who, as people often do, you know, confessed her own drug use to me once she learned that I was a researcher who was studying drugs. And it wasn't anything major. You know, it might have been something, you know, pretty low key like marijuana, still very illegal, at least at the time it was, but it's, you know, wasn't methamphetamine. And so she asked me what I was doing. And I told her I was writing a book on methamphetamine. And, you know, it's not I don't know how to explain it to you, the look that you get when you tell someone that you're researching methamphetamine and writing a book on methamphetamine manufacturing. It's always like this puzzled look of what is that and why are you doing that? And so she asked me what the book was about. And it was at that time that I think that I first came to realize that the book would have to start with the story of Evan. You know, I started to tell her about the third interview and describe to her what I had often remembered as some of the most memorable encounters that I had had or one of the most powerful and memorable memorable encounters that I had while I was collecting my data and it was Evan and he eventually became you know the opening story of the book. Evan met me at a restaurant and the restaurant wouldn't allow us to record once we you know asked them if we could move to a table where we could have less background noise. I believe it was a restaurant that possibly was in the midst of a lawsuit of some type or something and so they actually told us that we had to leave the restaurant. And at that point, I was very afraid that I would lose him, you know, because it's one thing to go and meet a stranger to conduct an interview. And it's another thing to have to move. But we moved and we found another place and it was, you know, just as noisy and crowded. And, you know, we sat in a corner and he would lean forward over the napkin holder, which had the recorder on it. He was very intense and very purposeful and very intentional in his words and what he said and in making sure that we were actually recording it all. And, you know, he was the one who in the middle of the interviews and mind you, there are people sitting next to us eating lunch or breakfast or whatever it was. And he's opening sugar packets and he's pouring them on the table and he's, you know, using something to slice them into thin lines and then he's putting the sugar packets in a spoon and he's you know very much demonstrating for us some of the activities that were engaged in it and I think one of the things I remember most about Evan beside the gunshot which is you know at the beginning of the book is when I asked him to explain to me what he was talking about and he you know he didn't know how to describe it and I asked him if it was an illusion and he said one of the most profound things, which was imagine if you had all the money in the world that you wanted in the palm of your hand, you know, a stack of $100 bills, and then you lifted up the top one and only the top one was real. And that was when I first kind of decided that Evan would be the one who starts my book and that the theme would be on the illusion of methamphetamine. The illusion of methamphetamine is that it gives you everything you've ever wanted. The truth of the tragedy is that it takes everything you have.